How's it going everybody, I'm Lewis and we've just had the catacombs of Current come to old school RuneScape. Underneath there lies a vast set of catacombs, distorted by the dark altar and overrun by all kinds of creatures. These catacombs are no place for everyday adventurers. To get into the catacombs, go to the Current city center and investigate the statue. This will put you in the center of the dungeon. Throughout the catacombs, there are four additional exits and entrances, however, to use them as an entrance, you must first use it as an exit in order to find out where exactly it is. As we've discussed in previous developer blogs, news posts and poll videos, the catacombs of Corend will have plenty of monsters. These include Abyssal Demons, Black Demons, Great Demons, Lesser Demons, Dust Devils, Dark Beasts, Fire Giants, Dagonoffs, Bronze Dragons, Iron Dragons, Steel Dragons, Hellhounds, Cyclopses, Hill Giants, Moss Giants, Ankus, Shades, Ghosts, Skeletons, Animated Axes and Pickaxes, Cyclops again, Magic Axe and an Animated Pickaxe again. As well as all these, they've added a few high level versions of existing Slayer monsters. These should be harder to kill, but will have much better rewards. They include the Deviant Spectre, the Greater Necrol, the Mutated Bloodveld, the Warped Jelly, the Twisted Banshee, the Brutal Blue Dragon, the Brutal Red Dragon, and the Brutal Black Dragon. The next item inside the catacombs is the Arclight and the Ancient Shards. During your time inside the catacombs, a monster might drop an Ancient Shard. You can use three of these on a Dark Light to create the Arclight, at which point it will have a thousand charges. The charges will degrade every time you attack with the weapon, and it will require more shards to charge back up. And the Arclight is slightly better than an Abyssal Tentacle when used against demons. If you happen to get any spare ancient shards, you can use them on the altar in the middle of the catacombs to transport your way around the dungeon quicker. Next, the beast within. The catacomb creatures will also have a chance of dropping pieces of dark totem. Once you have a full totem, you can spend it to go down into the lower catacombs, which will house a demiboss. This demiboss has been engulfed and distorted by the ever-flowing energy of the dark altar. Unfortunately, they haven't actually released this content yet, but it will be available for everybody next week. So keep an eye out for that. In other news this week, we've got a few quality of life updates and some bug fixes. An axe store has opened for business within the Woodcutting Guild. They've added a bank deposit box to the Woodcutting Guild bank. The Woodcutting Guild now provides a hidden plus seven Woodcutting boost. The Massacre soundtrack from the Falador Massacre event is no longer available. However, if you are interested in what that sounds like, there are plenty of videos on YouTube. Switching protected skills on Deadman mode is now protected by your bank pin. They've added level up messages for redwood logs to the fire making and woodcutting skill guides. And the current task overlay is now available within the woodcutting guild. They've corrected some capitalization to the Lumbridge Cook's dialogue. They've added gender specific titles to Advisor Grimm's dialogue during the Throne of Miscellania. They've corrected the spelling of parasitic in the Abyssal Nexus. They've corrected the typo in a message related to Seal Thrill's rod. They've added Zenite, Abyssal Weapons, and the Dragon Warhammer to the GE Salesman's item list. They've corrected the typo when redirecting the Blood and Soul portals within the Abyss. They've corrected the height of the player when crossing the Monkey Bars in Crook's Lair. Examining items shown in the Death interface on Deadman Mode now displays the correct information for the item examined. You can no longer dig for Sangrubs without the requirement of manually digging with a spade. Several object interactions have had delays removed from their script or have been restricted from being used in the duel arena. You can now call pets that are close to you but are trapped. Four rogue push tiles have been removed from the Hosidious area. Game messages related to pickpocketing elves should now be filtered and the your stunned message should also be filtered. And finally, pickpocketing elves should also now correctly receive the 10% buff to your chances of successfully pickpocketing with the hard Ardoin diary. Everything here seems great. I'm sure it'll all be good content. I do question some of the monsters that they put into these catacombs though. For example, I feel that hill giants, dust devils, dagonoffs, and perhaps maybe dark beasts and cyclopses are a bit out of place. The demons and the new creatures are definitely a great fit here, and I quite like for them to add more distorted versions of these creatures. They don't even have to have improved stats like the ones they added today, they just need to look and fit into that environment they come from. I'm rather keen on the small idea I've got of having distorted beasts instead of dark beasts. They'll be an incredibly similar monster, basically the same, however they would look kind of purple and warped by the environment they've been in. 
If you want to discuss this update, please go on the forums or do so in my comments below. If you're interested in old school RuneScape this summer, please click here for my video on the Summer Ahead post. And if you're interested in the previous old school RuneScape update, please click here for the Woodcutting Guild. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share. And if you want to keep up to date with the old school RuneScape updates, death box and polls, please subscribe. I've been Lewis, thanks for watching. Goodbye.